I recorded this once already, but everything was too small. So I've upped the resolution to 720p so everything's big and chunky. It's not going to look like this on your screen, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. So one of the beautiful things about all this mess that Microsoft has created here with Windows 11 is that the community has responded. So we talked about Cairo Desktop, which has been around for a while, and this is a total shell replacement for Windows. They did not just make a shell replacement and then leave it alone. So there's the managed shell library, and people can build on top of this functionality and have access to what's going on under the hood with Windows. And that's exactly what's happened right here with this project called RetroBar. And this aims to recreate the classic taskbars from Windows 98 all the way up until Windows Vista, and it supports theming. So we're gonna install this, and then since there's not very many dark themes, I did a little something for you all. I spent literally two days and created a ton of different dark themes a ton. So you have lots of dark themes to choose from and you can download the entire package. We're going to install that. It's all going to be really easy uh, and I'll show you how to set it up and use it. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS. 25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now, when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View, Keys, and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activate, Activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. So the first thing you need to do is come over here to GitHub, and on the side here, you see Retro Bar, the releases, you need to go to the releases. Click on that, scroll down, and then download the version for your system. I've got a 64-bit Windows system, so these are not files that install on your computer. These are files that you have to drop into a folder. So I'm downloading it there, and you see we got a zip drive, or a zip drive, a zip folder. Remember those things, zip drives? Now you need to put this somewhere. So I'm just gonna open up my hard drive here, my computer, they call it this computer, whatever. I've got a folder called goods on my C drive. So I'm just gonna make a new folder in there and call it retro bar. You can put this literally anywhere. It even runs off of a folder on the NAS. I wouldn't do it that way because it's not super snappy, but whatever, you can do anything you want. And then I'm gonna drop retrobar.exe into that folder. That's it. So now, if I double click, since I've got my thing hidden down there, check that action out. We now have an old school taskbar. Before I even get too far, I totally forget about the people who do this. Let me unlock the taskbar right now and just show you. Yep, there it is on the side. Oh, I forgot to customize those locks. There it is on top. There it is on the side. There it is on the bottom again. And then we can lock it. You can put it anywhere you want. I have no idea why Windows won't allow you to put it on the side or the top anymore. But rejoice, people who like taskbars in different places. Now, at first I thought, well, how could this be more functional than the modern stuff? Is it? And I forgot how much I missed having Quick Launch separate from all of my tabs. Let me just show you what I'm talking about right here. So Quick Launch is over here. These icons do not move. And this is all the stuff you've got pinned to your taskbar. It'll all show up there. So this stuff doesn't move. Even though I've got a bunch of stuff open, all of my different programs that I have open show up over here. Now you can't stack them yet. Maybe that's a feature they'll add in the future, but that's not something you could do back in the day either. See, everything's laid out this way. I can see all the stuff that's down there. Let's just show for, you know, like, compare and contrast what it was like back in the day. So here's my other Windows desktop. And as you can see, all the different icons, if I want to see what they are, I've got to hover over them and be like, is this what I'm looking for? Or yes, I was looking for the store. Was I looking for open broadcast? You have to like hover over to see what's there. Now you can expand this, but when you expand this, it expands these programs right where they are. So it ends up shifting your icons, your essentially your quick launch buttons all over the place. So whereas right now, I always know that Firefox is right here. As soon as I turn this feature on, everything's moved. You see Firefox and all that stuff was in a certain spot and now it's moved. And now it's and now if I wanted to open a new window, I gotta right click and do a new you know new window or whatever. So it's really annoying. To, I, I I don't use it Windows this way. And this started with Windows 7, and I forgot that I didn't like it because I've gotten used to it. 
I forgot that it slowed me down because now I'm like always getting sidetracked by stuff. A lot of times I'll be needing to find something because I don't use the taskbar that way. It's really confusing to me. I like having my icons in one spot, but I'll come over here and I'll be like, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I needed to go to Firefox and grab something from Epic Pants, but then I'll see this and be like, oh, somebody replied to my email and I'll get sidetracked and answer an email that I should have answered later and it'll for, I'll lose you know like track of what I was doing. But now with this, these buttons never ever move. So I found that my workflow has greatly improved. So speaking of greatly improved, let's click on right click on the bar and then click on properties. I'll show you some of the themes we have here. So you got the Windows 2000 theme. A lot of them are very similar in the der derivative of one another. Windows ME, everybody's favorite operating system. We can pop this out over here. Look, there are two things here. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, and let's see here. Let's go ahead and get Windows XP Blue. Check that out. And then we can do all kinds of things. Like if you want to come over here to advanced, we can show this on multiple displays. I'm not going to uncheck that because I've only got one display. You could say show everything on all taskbars, but this is the one that I like. This shows the programs that are open on that window only on that taskbar. So you don't clutter up every single taskbar. Now your quick launch still shows up on every taskbar, but I don't know, maybe they'll add a checkbox in the future so that I can only have the this on the main monitor. But, you know, if you're someone who likes to open things up on other monitors, then maybe you'll like this. So anyway, there's all kinds of stuff to do. And you automatically start with log on. So there we go. Um, and then we've got our middle click actions here. So middle click opens a new instance or closes the task. So you can pick, I, I like closing the task with my middle click. I'm used to that for tabs on my web browser. So yeah, we've even got Vista Arrow, which is one of the only dark themes, but it's not my favorite dark theme. So let's let's install some more dark themes by coming over here uh, to this little thing that I made for everybody. Before I go that far, I want to give a little thank you to Longhorn Fusion, who made this Longhorn Fusion very minimal cool theme. You can download this one as well. It's a nice if you want to like slate almost like a simple minimal gray theme. I, I used this one as a cheat sheet for my first theme that I was working on. And then I went over and grabbed the themes directly from here, from RetroBar, and started editing those for all the rest of them. So anyway, let's go ahead and download this. Now, I've got it on DeviantArt, but there's also going to be a direct link if you don't want to mess around with logging into this AI hellhole that is DeviantArt right now. But it's a good place for discovery. So I've got this on DeviantArt right now. And you can just log in and click on the download button, and it'll download a zip file. I'm not logged in, so i got to log in right quick. All right, so i got it downloaded, and that downloaded yet another zip file. Inside this folder, you're going to see that we have resources and themes. So all we need to do, see our retro bar folder, just grab resources and themes and drop it in there. We are done. Now these don't show up automatically, I don't believe. Yeah. Oh, they showed up automatically? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Maybe there was an update, but I had to restart it last time. So let's go through. Uh, so those showed up automatically. Really cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. Dark Mode Windows 2000. I'm proud of these themes, just so you know. But yeah, there's our dark mode for Windows 2000. 98 and 95 are just derivative. Uh, a lot of the ones that were derivative, sometimes I would take some liberties and make slightly different colors, you know, just slightly different versions. A lot of the classic themes are derivative. I think of the XP Classic was the one that Vista was borrowing from. So yeah, very cool right there. And then um, I also, dark mode XP. I like the way this one looks quite a bit. So we have all kinds of dark mode. Now, dark is not dark enough for some people like me. So I've done something else. I've made midnight. At midnight, I gave a little bit of a purple hue to it because these are the ones that I like to use and I like purple or midnight blue or whatever color that is like this. This is midnight watercolor. Watercolor? I can speech. So yeah, this one looks pretty cool. And then we also have uh, just our standard, you know, Windows 2000 style and all the other classic styles. I want to show you the XP Midnight. I think that one looks nice. And then I'll show you my favorite right here, which is uh, Windows Longhorn. And I made this one sort of just a flat theme. It's got some glow when you hover over things. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to do font smoothing because we're doing a terrible resolution. So it'll look a little bit better with font smoothing on. You can allow that or disallow that. It's up to you. All right, so that's Windows Longhorn. I think this is the one I'm going to use. And then the last one I want to show you is I made one more extra credit for ridiculousness, just pure XP in the purple style. Look at that purpleness go. So that's cool. One of the things you'll note is that when you click on this, it is still bringing up all this Windows 11 nonsense. That's because this is replacing the taskbar. It doesn't replace the start menu. You know, we still got this 
God, this looks huge on 720p monitors. We still got all this Windows 11 stuff. So this is just replacing the start menu, but I've already found this to greatly improve my quality of life and my workflow. Let's do something other than purple. We'll just go simple dark mode XP. Um, so yeah, clicking on the instruments over here, clicking on the audio thing brings up all this instrument cluster of nonsense. Ugly, it's stupid. I hate it. This background's got to go right now. Yeah, let's get that Oblivion one going. There we go. So hopefully we'll have some, some new functionality sometime uh, that can replace some of these flyouts. So what I've done in order to replace this flyout, because I hate the, the, the volume flyout. This is, I hate this. I don't need all this. I just need the volume. So what I've done to kind of get around that is I've installed a program called Ear Trumpet. And when you click on that, it's a different flyout that just shows all the programs you have open that, you know, have volume. You can change the volume on those independently. And if you right click on it, you come up here, you have a hover that says Windows Legacy. And then we can go like, hey, I wanna to go to my playback devices and look where it takes you to the old school control panel. So Ear Trumpet, I prefer way over Windows, even though they've included a lot of this functionality in the new Windows 11 updates, I don't care. I still think this is a much better way to manage my volume and it's a much better flyout. Now we need something like that for the network and something like that for the clock. And I'll be happy because I don't care about all this stuff. I don't clear. I don't need all these notifications. I just I clicked on the clock. I didn't click on notifications. Anyway, hey, speaking of that, show desktop button. There it is. So if you want that, like a quick way to show your desktop, if you keep a ton of uh, whatever icons on your desktop, by all means, I don't keep mine there. Now the last thing I've done is I've installed Open Shell. And that gives us an alternative start menu without the advertising and all the nonsense. And this is an old school style uh, menu. And you can put all the stuff you want, just pin it right here. So I recommend installing OpenShell as well. You'll see this quick launch area right here. Now, since we're on a modern version of Windows, you can't just paste everything. Let's see, do I want to paste Windows security? Not really, but we can do pin to taskbar. It didn't show up. So there's a workaround for this. And actually, I kind of like the workaround. If you right click and go to properties again, you can have a quick launch location. So you can select your location. I've created a quick launch folder here, right here. It's, you can make a quick launch folder anywhere. It doesn't matter where you put it. So you can select that folder and that's our quick launch now. So I'll show you by going to that folder that I've just filled it with some shortcuts. And let's say you wanna drop another shortcut in there. Let's like, all right, I will just do this for the hell of it. Notepad, right click and drag. Right click, not single, not, not left click. Drop it in there and do create shortcut. Open shell settings. Let's put that there, why not? Right click and drag, drop it, create shortcuts here. There you go. And you can create shortcuts from anywhere on your computer and it'll all go to your quick launch. But I don't like my quick launch to be too awfully huge. So that, that, that is what it is. If you're from the old school and you like launchy, install Power Toys. It gives you all kinds of things that you can use beyond this. But check this out. Remember this, alt space. And now we can type stuff. So let's type uh, Firefox. There we go. We open up another instance of Firefox. So easy. So all these things together are making Windows way more functional. And I'm no longer as scared about Windows 11. Because now that I can replace things with just totally new UI elements, I'm really happy. The next thing we need to do is replace the file explorer. So I'll explore some of those. We'll be explorers of explorers and explore some alternate explorers. I've just got to figure out which explorer alternative I like better. So I got some exploration to do. All right, so here's how it looks at a more reasonable resolution of 1080p. So yeah, I think it looks quite good, but let me know what you think. And if you want to say thanks for, for all the different themes that I've made, well, you can just do so in the comments. But if you like retro music, there's a link to my music in the description. I'm not sure if all of you know that I make music. So the last couple of albums have been heavily inspired by old school DOS RPGs and games like that. So give it a listen. And, uh, you know, if you like it, go ahead and pick it up over on Bandcamp. You can get the whole discography for 10 bucks. But yeah, that's if you want to say thanks. But first, be sure to go over and thank the creators of Retro Bar because it is really, really making Windows 11 tolerable. <laughs>